Good morning, Eagles. I'm Cameron. And I'm Haley. And we're from the Eagle New 7th Hour. Now please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> what just happened? I wiped out. What do you think happened? Duh. On that note, we should head on over to our story with McKenna to see if kids wipe out on our obstacle course. Good morning! Hi guys! McKenna, what are you doing here? Just work on a segment for the broadcast. The one about the obstacle course? Yeah. So let's go see Team 1 and Team 2 hash it out on the obstacle course. Swoop! Are you excited about the obstacle course? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Very. Sure. Yeah, sure. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think your time will be? Very short. Bad. How do you feel you performed on the obstacle course? Absolutely amazing. <laughs> Very well because you won. Great. Winning's all that matters. What hardest thing you had to do? <laughs> Walk across the scooter, yes. Yeah. To sum it up, team one was amazing. They did really great. Team two needs a little bit more work, but they tried their best. Hey Haley, Cameron, um, I think we need to go back to doing our anchor shots. You're right. Um, bye McKenna! Why are you dancing? Because I'm getting ready for the dance battle. Oh, the one that Haley, Cindy, and Caitlin are doing? Yeah, and I'm going to dominate. Mm-hmm. Let, so let's head on over to see these people dominate the dance battle. Hey, everyone. I'm Sydney from the Eagle News 7th Hour. Today we'll be having a contest between teachers and students. Teachers and students will draw off into paper from a bowl with a piece of paper will contain a dance on it. After that, the teachers and students will try to do the dance as best they can. Let's head on over and see their moves. Bet twenty more, I hit the first row. Freak This isn't a frog. Fine. This is still not a frog, Cameron. Why do you want a frog so bad? So I could tell them more about the frog dissection, but I guess we'll have to leave that up to Kelsey and Lila. So let's hop on over to learn more about the frog dissection. Ah, Good morning, Eagles. I'm Lila. I'm Nick. I'm Antonio. Our story today is about the eighth grade frog dissection. You will learn about the who, what, when, where, and the importance about frog dissections. Antonio, what is happening in science? The students will be dissecting frogs. All the students? No, just the 8th graders. When are they doing it? On Tuesday and Wednesday. Where? In Miss Lester's and Dr. Witt's room. Let's head on over to Dr. Witt to learn more about the 8th grade dissection. Alright, well, students in 8th grade are dissecting frogs. Well, this is important because the students um, this semester in eighth grade, they have learned about cells and tissues and organs and organ systems and organelles and how everything works together in the body. And they've learned about cells and prokaryotic and eukaryotic and sing or singular and multicellular. And so now they actually get to see how all these things work together and how they're encompassed in an animal and put together. 
Um, I do think it's a fun learning experience because it provides that hands-on when a student actually gets to learn and read and see videos and then they actually get to put their hands on it and actually be able to do it. Let's hop on over to see what students thought about the dissection. Yeah, I thought it was really fun to be able to dissect a frog. Um, yes, because it was different. I did because it was a different kind of experiment instead of just the normal thing that we do. I enjoyed the experiment because it was cool. Uh, it was, it was alright, it was decent, you know. Yes, I enjoyed the experiment because it was interesting to see the inside of a frog. Yeah, I would do again, probably with a, a shark or something. I probably wouldn't just because I didn't like the smell, like the chemical smell. Same. I liked the virtual dissection better. Uh, I would do it again, and I would do it with like a tiger or something. <laughs> <laughs> a monkey. That would be pretty cool. Go. Uh, no, I would actually not want to do it again because I don't like the smell of it. Um, I would do it again, probably with like a monkey or something. They just taught me the different organs and stuff of a frog and then it also explained and taught me how to dissect. Um, it taught us like how a frog works, I guess, and what's inside a frog. And like where all the organs are. It taught... It taught me what the organs of a frog looks like and actually how big they are. It taught me what the inside of a frog looks like and how to properly like cut it open. I hope you guys enjoyed the frog dissection story. Thanks for watching. Back to you, anchors. Frog I'm Jacob. I'm Parker. And I'm Christian. And today we will be talking to you about the eighth grade dance. Fifth grade dance was last Friday. And we're going to talk to you about what you could do at the dance. Who set up the dance. And what students thought about it. So let's get right into it. Now, who planned it was primarily Stuco and especially Miss Mullen. Miss Mullen really stepped in to take care of things and get it all set up in the end. But Stuco definitely did do some throughout to help plan it out. Now, it was also set up with the thanks of a company called Blue Line DJs. They have connections within the school, and thanks to that, we were able to get them to come in and DJ for the entire thing in the cafeteria. The 8th grade dance was, as the name implies, exclusively for 8th graders, and it was kind of a farewell to the 8th graders who are going to be leaving and going to the high school next year. Now, our last topic is how people felt about the dance. And to put it simply, a lot of people enjoyed it. For example, even on social media apps like Snapchat and Instagram, there were countless posts posting their fun times and saying things with captions that say, this was the best night of my life, or this was an incredible night, thank you to all of my friends, etc. Now, let's go into some interviews to see how students felt about the dance and the overall impressions. So how's the dance? It was great. And is it worth having next year? Yes. So how was the dance? The dance was super fun and I'm really glad I got to experience it when I get arrested. So is the dance worth having next year? Yeah, I think the years like of next eighth graders will have a lot of fun. I think we should definitely do it again. So how was the dance? Um, I think it was very fun. I think everybody enjoyed it and there was food good music, and I just think everybody else enjoyed it just like I did. So is the dance worth having next year? Uh, I think it's really worth having next year because I bet it raises money for the school, and it's just something that a lot of other schools don't get to do, so I think it's just a great opportunity to have for our school. Thank you very much for watching, Eagles. Now let's head on back over to our anchors. Haley, I'm so excited for summer. Me too, but I don't know what I'm going to do. Neither do I. I don't know about anything new, and stuff here is getting old. Well, I think Baxter, Jacob, Logan, and Joey are telling us about some new stuff coming this summer. I need some new ideas, so let's go on over there and see what they have to say about the new stuff coming this summer.
Hello, Eagles. This is Broadcasting 7th Hour. I'm Logan. I'm Jacob. I'm Baxter. I'm Joseph. And we're going to see what he can do over the summer. Let's go over to see what new tech is coming out this summer. So there's a bunch of new tech coming out this summer, including the Magic Leap 1 AR headset. And if you don't know what AR stands for, it stands for Augmented Reality. Augmented Reality is basically, it's VR, but you have the capability to see through it. Then there's also the Red Hydrogen Phone, which is coming out. Red, which is the brand, makes cameras for Hollywood movies and shows. And they will release their first phone at the price of $1,595. But they say it's going to have the best camera on the market. Let's head over to Logan to see what new movies are coming out this summer. Some movies coming out this summer are Super Troopers, Deadpool 2, you also have Venom, and a few others. Let's talk about Super Troopers. Super Troopers is a comedy and a sequel off of Super Troopers 1, which was a very good and successful comedy. You also have Deadpool 2, which is an action comedy, which will be coming out in around four to three days. You also have Venom. It's a story about Spider-Man's worst enemy, but doesn't really have Spider-Man in it. So it might go bad or good either way. You also have Solo, A Star Wars Story, which is about Solo making his crew, get, meeting Chewbacca, and finding the Millennium Falcon. You also have Ant-Man and the Wasp, which is about Ant-Man and the Wasp teaming up to tackle, I don't know, villains, anything. Doesn't have much details right now. Now let's head over to Baxter to see what new games are coming out soon. New video games that are going to be coming out is called Vampire. It's coming out on June 5th. It's an RPG that takes place in Europe, where a plague has affected almost everybody. You're playing as a vampire named Dr. Jonathan Reed. Your goal is to survive and, without dying, and you have to find uncorrupted blood to live. State of Decay 2, coming out on May 22nd, is a survival game. It's practically zombie apocalypse, except for it's a little bit more realistic. There's very limited ammo and practically no weapons left. You have Detroit Becoming Human. It's another RPG where you're an android and you're trying to fit in with humans. You can choose one of many androids and many storylines. This is coming out on May 25th. All the way from Second Hour Broadcasting, we have a very special guest, Emily Wilson! Hi, happy to be here. Now shout out to Maya Gallup for winning second place in the National Writing Arts Contest sponsored by the Holocaust Museum and Learning Center. Maya won $200 for her piece of artwork entitled, The End, It's Only the Beginning. Way to go, Maya! Another shout out to Dr. Witt and Miss May for all their hard work on lining up some great field trips. Here are a few pictures from some of the trips. When some loud bragger tries to put me down and says the school is great, I tell him right away. What's the matter, buddy? Ain't you heard of my school? It's number one in the state. So be true to your school tonight. Just like you went to your girl tonight. Be true to your school tonight. Don't let your colors fly. Be true to your school.
catch up on this week's sports on This Week's Sports News with Brandon, Jackson, Miles, and Luke. But before we do that, bye, Emily. Bye, thanks for having me. Hello, I'm Brennan Davis, and welcome to this week in sports news. As you know, the PGA and European Golf Tour ended April 22nd, 2018. Our top finisher was Alexander Levy, a French golfer, in first place. Next is Alvador Camiro, with a score of negative seven, representing Spain. Third is Alexander Bajorjak, representing Sweden, with a score of negative six. We have now faced the semifinals, and these matchups are looking to be pretty good. The Cavs played the Celtics last Sunday, with LeBron only being held to score 14 points. This gave Boston a massive advantage and led them to a 25-point win. Monday, May 14th, the Houston Rockets faced Golden State Warriors. Golden State went to win the first game, even after Stephen Curry's ankles fell off after guarding Chris Paul. The score was 106-119. to Now let's go over to Miles to see the results of the NFL Draft. The NFL Draft was on Thursday, April 26th. There are some pretty good first round picks. Let's go ahead and talk about them. The first pick for the Cleveland Browns was Baker Mayfield, a quarterback from Oklahoma. It was pretty obvious he was going to be the first pick for the Browns because the Browns needed a quarterback badly. The second pick was Saquon Barkley for the New York for the New York Giants. He was a running back from Penn State that excelled greatly at getting yardage against opponents. The third pick for the New York Jets was Sam Darnold, who was a quarterback from USC. And the fourth pick was Denzel Ward from the Browns, who was a cornerback in Ohio State. And finally, the fifth pick of the first round was Bradley Chubb, a defensive end from North Carolina State, who went to the Broncos. Some of the latest news in the UEFA Champions League is, on April 24th, Roma played Liverpool as an away game, and Liverpool won the game 5-2. On April 25th, FC Bayern played Real Madrid as a home game. Real Madrid won the game 2-1. The first game of the second leg of the semifinals was on May 1st, and the teams playing were Real Madrid versus FC Bayern. It was a home game for Real Madrid, but they tied 2-2. But since Real Madrid had more overall goals, they went to the finals. The last game in the semifinals was on May 2nd. The teams playing were Roma and Liverpool, and it was a home game for Roma. Roma won the game 4-2, but since Liverpool had the most overall goals in between the two games, they went on to the finals. The championship game is on May 26. Back to you, Angus. Cameron, this is our last broadcast of school year, and the last broadcast I'm ever going to be in. Wait, you mean this is my last time on camera? And mine, too. Well, I'm Cameron. And I'm Haley. I'm McKenna. Goodbye, Goodbye Eagles. Have a fantastic rest of the school year and an amazing summer. Shoo! Haley. Ugh. <laughs> 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 she looks at me and I just... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>